Here are some hidden iPhone features you may not have known about. The first, setting your default web browser. Sounds kind of boring, but Apple is really sneaky about this in the settings app. Right, and this is how we're gonna prove to you that this is not a clickbait video. This is legitimately a hidden feature. Legitimately. So if we open up settings right now, my default web browser is set to Safari. So I'm gonna scroll down. We were, this is a later tip. That's supposed to be a later tip. That's <laughs> a good. later tip. Open settings. I'm gonna scroll down to Safari right now. Tap on Safari. Right now, you cannot change your preferred web browser because it's set as Safari. Now, what if I go into Chrome, tap back to settings, scroll down to Chrome. Default web browser, let's tap on that and let's just select Chrome, why not? Mm -hmm. So now Chrome is my default web browser. Tap back to Chrome, tap back to settings, scroll back up to Safari again, tap on that. Default browser app. Comes out of nowhere. Comes out of nowhere. So now here's where I get kind of annoyed. Default browser app is now an option. Okay. Okay, great. So let's tap on that. If we select Safari again, watch what happens here. Safari, tap back, it's gone. It's gone. I mean, I can't believe it. It's hidden. Especially with Chrome, I think this is an important point to make because why would somebody on an iPhone want to use Chrome? Well, there's a whole lot of reasons, especially if you use Chrome on a PC mm -hmm. or a Mac. There's a lot of synchronization that Chrome can do that Safari can't do if you're a Google person. So definitely a setting to watch out for can actually save some headaches. Next up, we're going to talk about Spotlight Search, something that is really popular on Macs, not so much on iPhones. I love this. I use this all the time. And I think you should too. So to do this, go back to the home screen on your iPhone and then swipe down from somewhere near the top of the screen. Now, what if you're watching one of our settings videos and we're talking too fast and you can't keep up? But you remember, <laughs> they said something about reduce white point. So we're going to just tap in reduce white point here. And look at that, settings. It goes into the settings app, and if David taps on that now, he'll go right to it. So search does a lot more than just search the settings app. It searches mail and notes, Safari history. It searches apps. This is how I open apps on my phone 99% mm. of the time because I'm not going to swipe through and look for things. Yeah, especially now with the app library. I've moved so many things just off my home screen into the app library. I guess you can go to the app library and search there too. But Exactly. It's a separate search. Though. Separate search. Spotlight brings it all together yep. and it's customizable. So what if you had a dating app on your phone like Match or something and you didn't want that to be showing up whenever you're searching for something or... You know, it's a secret. Yeah, well, it could be embarrassing if you're in public. So. Let's go back to the main page yeah. of the settings app. Mm -hmm. We're going to scroll up here to Siri and search. Tap on that and then scroll down here to your list of apps. Now, if you don't want one of these apps to show up in search, tap mm -hmm. on it. Then tap the switch next to show and search. Turn that off. The other switch in here that's important is suggest app because whenever you swipe down from the screen, Siri starts to pay attention to the apps that you're opening most frequently. Go to the home screen, yep, swipe, swipe down, down and clear then, that out. Yep, and then at the top, they'll have David's most frequently used apps. If you don't want an app to appear there because it's a dating website or whatever, just go into the settings app and you can turn it off, suggest this app or whatever. It's turn called. that switch off next to suggest. Yeah. So it might take a little bit of customization to get you to be comfortable with it because, you know, God knows anything can appear in the search. I think sometimes the best way to learn to do something is to watch an expert do it. Since we don't have any experts around here, Whoa. you're going to have to settle for us. But if you subscribe to this channel, you're going to get to see us do these things. Use our phones. You'll get better just by watching us. So please subscribe. Also, we're trying to get to a million subs. Yep. That'd be awesome. Like that subscribe button below this video. Next up, we want to talk about LED flashes for notifications. Back when I had an Android, I thought this was a pretty neat feature. I could just, you know, the dot shows up when you have a notification. Mm -hmm. You can set that up on iPhone too. I never knew that you were an Android person. Yeah, back when, to, you know. I just, I just never like knew that about 11 you. 11 years ago. We're going to go back to the main page of settings. There we go. Tap on accessibility. Then tap audio visual. Scroll down, LED flash alerts, tap that switch, turn it on. So now you got a couple options here, LED flash for alerts when you get a notification. Also, flash on silent. So my beg of you is to just be careful of this feature because it can be kind of annoying for people. You may have seen it earlier in this video when it actually went off, but David's gonna send me a text message. You're minding your own business, everything's a conky dory, yes, ma'am. I'll have the chicken cacciatore today uh, with blue cheese on the salad. And then I'm ordering my meal in a restaurant, and all of a sudden, across the restaurant, I see this going on. 
And it's going on all the time because some guy figured out how to turn it on and thinks that it's totally not annoying for everybody else in the restaurant. Has this happened to me before? Maybe. Anyway, yeah. please be careful of this feature. Only use it if you need to. It's, it's really made for people that have difficulty hearing. Next up, there's a way to make your iPhone passcode a lot more secure. So let's open up the settings app, go back to the main page of settings and tap on face ID and passcode. I'm gonna enter my passcode to get to this part of the settings app. So we're gonna scroll down and tap change passcode. Passcode options. I feel like a lot of people just blow by this when they're setting up their iPhone for the first time. Like, okay, I'll enter my four or six digit passcode. I just wanna use my phone. But you've got a lot of options here. So let's tap on passcode options. You can do a custom numeric code, so more than six digits, or you can do a custom alpha numeric code, working some letters there too. All right, let's uh, set that up on your phone. All right, custom alpha numeric code. So why would you want to do this? And isn't it the most annoying thing in the world? So four digit passcodes are not very secure. Right. And we talked, we talked about we this with, with pin numbers actually, where there's, you know, 20 pin numbers that account for 33% of all pin numbers. So right. pretty easy to get into. Easy to get into six digit more secure. This is super secure, but a lot of people think that because they have face ID set up and that's like a one in a million in terms of accuracy mm -hmm. that they're actually secure, but then they've got a four digit passcode. And just remember that on an iPhone, everything comes back to the passcode. Mm -hmm. Forget about the face and touch. So all you would really have to do is enter this once whenever you turn on your phone. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really not that big of a deal and it could be a lot more secure. Next up, we want to show you how to see who is tracking you when you're on a web page in Safari. Let's go back to the home screen and I'm gonna open up Safari. Tap on that 2A button there, and then tap Privacy Report. It says eight trackers prevented. That's good. And so you can see current website here, ESPN 30 trackers. Wow. Yeah, we can tap into that. And you can see trackers prevented from profiling you. These are trackers trying to collect information about me. How do I find out more about these trackers? and what they're actually doing on my phone. Well, you could Google it. <laughs> you can at this point. Right. I just don't think this is super useful yet because they're not separating the okay ones like Google or Facebook. That, yep. You know, it's not great, but it's not terrible versus other ones that might actually be just, you know, taking your data from you, so. Next, a new iOS 15.4 feature, a little bit overdue here, but it's Face ID while wearing a mask. You used to be able to do this just with an Apple Watch. Now you can do it without the Apple Watch. That's cool. Let's show them how to set it up. All right. Go to settings, tap on face ID and passcode. We were just there. Obviously you need to update your iPhone to iOS 15.4 for this to work. And to learn Ugh. more about iOS 15.4, we got a card above whole video on the new features. If you come down here, face ID with the mask, make sure that switch is on. And then it's pretty much the standard face ID process where you put the mask on and you move your face around. But the way it works is that it notices the small details in your eyes. So just, when you're using this feature, don't be surprised if it doesn't work all that well because, you know, you're wearing a mask and sometimes that can come up a little bit. And if you're wearing a hat, it comes down a little bit. And it's been pretty hit or miss for yeah, me. Yeah, me too. Next up, a feature called Back Tap. Tap the back of your iPhone two or three times and it'll do something cool. Yeah. So how do we set that up? Let's go back to the main page of the settings app. Tap on accessibility. Scroll down and tap on touch. Scroll down and tap on Back Tap. So double tap, that would be two taps. Triple tap, that's three taps. Hope, hope you can keep up. Yes, yes, it's two, two, ha ha. Tap on double tap. <laughs> so what do you want your iPhone to do when you do the double tap? A lot of people like the screenshot. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's easier to press the buttons, but that's fine. A lot of different stuff to choose from here. Yeah, people make videos about this all the time. And they're like, the secret iPhone button. So that's what this is. Yeah, I actually think this is pretty cool. You can do Siri shortcuts too. So you have a shortcut that you use often. Double tapping that I think is probably a bit easier than going into the shortcuts app or asking Siri to run the shortcut. Indeed, it's a covert way to do it. With iPhones getting larger and larger, it's getting more and more difficult to just type with one hand, unless you have the iPhone SE for instance. But even me, I've got you know above average size hands. I can't always reach across the screen to type the letters that I want. Exactly. So. We're going to show you how to turn on the one-handed iPhone keyboard. There are a couple ways to do this. The hard way is to go into settings and set it up there. The easy way to do it is if you're just sending a message already. Let's go into that. I'm going to go back to the home screen of my iPhone, open the Messages app, and then press and hold on the little emoji smiley face character down there. So you've got a couple options here. You can see we've got the left-handed keyboard and the right-handed keyboard. Let's tap on the right-handed keyboard, and the whole thing just shifts over. Neat. Neat. It's like you're typing on an iPhone 4 again. Maybe you miss those days, the tiny little phones. Yes. 
And just to revert back, you can always just come up here, make it big again. For more iPhone keyboard tips, card above, description section below. We're talking a lot about other videos that we've made. You can just subscribe to this channel, click that notification Whoa. bell anytime you put out a new video. Yeah, you will know about it. And if you're, you know, sick of that, I did that already. I'm already a subscriber. What can I do to help you even more? Well, let me tell you about what some other people did to help us even more, David. You want to take it this time? Uh, you got it. You got the paper in your hands already. Christine Jansen, that's Christian Jansen. Thank you. Terry Berth, Caleb Henderson, Michael Cannon, Ed Peters, and Veronica Cruz. What do all these people have in common? They are Pay It Forward YouTube channel members. And we like them a lot. Thank you to all of our channel members who support us, especially these six people who we printed out and cut the paper in half yeah. because we're, we're giving people shout outs today. Get a shout out like that and a lot more. Click that join button down below. Next, we have a couple of camera tips for you, both involving the volume button. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, let's go back to the settings app. Tap back to the main page of settings. One more. And we're gonna go down to camera. I think a lot of people are gonna be thinking to themselves, I know this tip, but I bet that you don't know both of them. So That's we tap the on thing. camera. First thing we're talking about is use volume up for burst. Burst photographs just take a whole string of photos. These are great for action shots. So you can get a whole string of photos, you get 30, you just want the one where it looks the best. Mm -hmm. So if we go to the camera app now, really compelling photography here, but I can either press the volume button to just take one picture, or I can press and hold. You can kind of see Holy right there. Holy jeez. Yep. So I've got 30. Look out. Yep. 30. <laughs> iCloud storage. Time to yep. buy some new ones. Yeah, so if you go into that photo here, and I tap select, you can see all the different uh, burst photos. Obviously, they're going to be the same because it's a stationary iPhone, but this is not a good use case for so this, this is, feature. This is a really bad sell on but, this feature. But you could imagine that it is useful in yep. other use you're cases. You're at a sporting event, you're trying to take a picture of everyone jumping into the pool at once, something like that. Mm. Great use for this feature. And those are some hidden iPhone features you might not have known about. Thanks for watching this video. Please join, please subscribe. Yeah, thanks for watching.